There's going to be a lot of divorce uh, in this season that we're going into. And, and some of it can be avoided. Some, maybe we cannot help it, but some of it can be avoided. And if only people will listen that, you know, to the things, to the warnings that are being, like, sounded off on the, on the mountain right now. Every single relationship meeting that I have seen or been a part of, it's like God knows like, my children need to hear this, you know? And like I always tell you guys, I say, lead us not into temptation is a better prayer than deliver us from evil. Mm. You know that, right? So I'm going to keep telling you that. You understand? Lead us not is better than deliver us. So if you can hear and hear in, that's why I'm so happy with what has uh, happened this uh, two days. You know, the meeting, that word is rich if you digest it. We don't even need to talk about anything because you would apply it even in your relationships, right? So, but we're here to still break it down for some people that still need it to be broken down. And for some people who didn't hear the message, you know, who would only hear when we talk, it, talk about it in this way, you know? So for me, it's critical for us to realize something about marriage. Those of you who are married and those of you who are not married, take note of what you need to observe before you marry. Those of you who are married, take note of what you need to do to remain in the marriage, you know? And to say, God, lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Anytime you see a divorce, happen you know what just happened somebody chose themselves yes. somebody chose themselves because every marriage has an assignment and every every assignment has grace but the thing with grace is that it is standing there until you lean into it grace does not force itself on you so grace will not jump on you if you don't yield to it. If you don't say, Lord, I need you. The Bible says, acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. He will not direct your path so you can acknowledge him. If you acknowledge him, he will direct your path. Even if you believe you made a mistake, if you submit to grace, he's a way maker, remember? Yes. Miracle worker promise keeper. He makes water to spring forth what? In the desert. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, there's nothing, really, really there's nothing that's impossible with God. But whenever something, the, the center can no longer hold is because somebody say, my way, my life, my standard. So what I, one of the things I want to admonish the married folks is, look, marriage is not going to work as long as it's a bunch of rules and regulations that you keep. If you are tall, I will love you. If you are short, yes. If you are slim, yes. If you add a little weight, yes. If there's so much that no human being can actually be able to satisfy. And you know the thing about craving and fantasy, it keeps changing. So the person says, if you add weights more, <laughs> you understand? Then you add weight. Then they say, oh, if you're only taller, this weight I've added has made you shorter. So if you're only taller, then, then when you get taller, you start wearing heels. They say, ah, if you're only light-skinned a little bit. If you're light-skinned, they'll say, oh, you're mommy water. If you only you're a little darker. So you realize that it's, it's, if you're going to go by rules and regulations, really, you can never make it. And I've realized that the only marriages that will work are the ones that somebody sees you through the eyes of God. When somebody sees you through the eyes of God, when somebody sees you as a child of God, as a son of God, as somebody on a mission, and that's why the only thing that makes sense, if you are not married yet, is destiny. If it's not purpose and destiny first, forget about anything. I'm an I'm I'm advocate for attraction, yes. That's important. But if there's attraction and there's no purpose and destiny, forget it. Attraction for you? <laughs> <laughs> Pastor yes. Joy, can I make you hold on there? <laughs> Don't let us go uh, to uh, Canal uh, to <laughs> Allow me to allow me to, to be, be spiritual. Allow me to be spiritual just a little bit. <laughs> because I have seen ladies growing up that I felt I want to kill myself for, and I saw them now. Ah. 
No, that's that's a different class. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm saying this attraction doesn't work. That's what yes. I'm saying. No, <laughs> and, and that's why. Look, and when I say attraction, right? I was. They asked me a question on the last uh, that last uh, broadcast, and um, they said, "When, when?" I think the question was like, "When do you think? When do you know that there's no hope?" I say, "When there's total disconnect." And I explained what the total disconnect is. I said, when there's no filio, when there's no errors, when there's no agape. Mm. <laughs> so when I say there has to be attraction, the attraction has to be in that fold as well. Mm -hmm. It has to be filio, errors, and agape. Mm -hmm. And the agape is the one that has purpose and destiny inside of it. Okay. And that's the one that trumps every season. So whether you are in the winter of your relationship, whether you are in the, uh, uh, the summer of it, or whether you are in the spring of whether you are in the dry season or the whatever season, that is, is the agape that would endure all seasons. So the attraction, the reason why it's good is because, yes, that's what brings you together. You've got to like the person you are with. You can't be trying to make love to somebody and be praying. <laughs> Father, give me grace as I'm about to touch my wife. <laughs> Father, give me grace as my husband is about to touch me. No, 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 no. We, we want you to like it. <laughs> we want you to say, ooh. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> you understand? That's, that's the excitement. And so that's, that comes from when you like someone. When you're attracted to someone. And you can be attracted to someone's spirit, you know? You can be attracted to someone's personality. So that's where the friendship comes. You know, you can two work together except they agree. So you got to be heading in the same direction. You have to have things in common. You have to have values that are the same. You got to love certain things together. You can't be like opposites attract. Opposite, so she's opposite of me, I'm opposite of her. You soon find out that it, that just lasts in just that phase of you looking for something you are not. So at the end of the day, you must complement each other. So for me personally, that's why I'm telling you, I said, look, for it to work, you got to see that person as a child of God. You have to see that person like this person has a purpose to fulfill. And I'm going to be a nurturer. I'm not going to kill I'm going to nurture life. And when you see someone through the eyes of God, it's difficult for you to hate that person. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. So you will see that that person has a purpose and you will want to be a facilitator of that purpose. Mm -hmm. So the last thing I'm going to say is, who are you with? Are you with a critic or a fan? Mm. Because <laughs> that's going to determine how you survive. Mm. There are rules of engagement in marriage, you know? So, if you are with a critic, I'm going to give you a few examples, you know? When you are with a critic, a critic is anointed to see all your faults. Mm. Even if a, the whole world is singing your praises, a critic makes you feel like crap. Mm. A critic is only going to take the substance out of the negatives and amplify it to you constantly. Mm. A critic is going to boo you. Mm. You are never going to see a critic cheering you up. Mm. You are never going to see a critic recommending you. Mm. You are never going to see a critic approving you. Mm. And then a lot of spouses, uh, and even in relationships, ask the question, why is it that it's only when I do wrong that you dwell on it? It's like your power is activated when I'm wrong. What happens with all the times that I am right? Even when the whole room is clapping for you, when you get home in the privacy, your critic is going to point out, you know that table, I know everybody was happy, I, I didn't want to mess it up, I didn't want to look like I'm being negative, but they're negative. But you know that that tablecloth was supposed to be brown, not white, right? Mm. Did you see that when that boy, that boy, that, that short, fat boy, you know, did you see that he poured his, his cookie? He, he actually messed up that white. That's why I was telling you that you should not put the, 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 the white tablecloth. Now, regardless of the fact that it was a good party, everybody had fun, everybody was thanking you, 
You are now stuck with someone in your privacy who has made it all about the tablecloth. <laughs> That's what a critic does. A fan, on the other hand, will always amplify your strengths. Always amplify. A fan will tell you this. Now, when a critic is talking to you, huh, a critic will say, don't let them deceive you because you better be ready because you know because everybody say you can do it doesn't mean you should do it i personally think you should take more time mm. that's what a critic could tell you a fan on the other hand will say i don't know what took those people so long me i know that the only reason why i haven't done it is because you didn't put your mind to do it i know you can do anything if you put your mind to do it mm. now the same situation different energies so who are you with right now? That's one question. And who are you in your own relationship right now? Who are you with? It's easy to judge, but who are you? And someone may say, uh, well, the reason why I'm, I'm a critic is because I like things to be done excuse me, uh, properly. So um, I, I, I just have to tell the truth. I just have to tell it the way it is. I don't, I can't pretend, right? And another person would say, well, I don't, you know, try to give accolades because sometimes when you praise people, they change. It gets into their head. Yes, it gets into their head and they change and they become lazy and they don't do it no more. So I'm not going to do it no more. I've actually found myself in that situation before where I said, ah, Look at the small praise I just praised this person. Mm. Now they have use making me feel bad about it. <laughs> so I'm going to hold my praise to myself. And even if they are doing good, I'm just going to mute. I'm not just going to be mute, you know, and not just say anything. But in my heart, I really want to let them know how awesome they are. So I want to acknowledge that we can have those two situations. But I want to conclude before you start rushing me with other questions. <laughs> I want to conclude that life is a choice. And one thing I've realized is that when I love, I love. So it's better to love and lose than not to love at all. Oh, wow. Treat that. <laughs> and you, because you know what I always tell myself? I live with myself. If I come and entertain you guys and I go home and I'm depressed, just because I was putting up an act, you're not, I'm going to be wrinkled 